Hey guys, it's Kevin from Moonlight Mantis. How's it going? Um, just doing some feeding right now in the shop. It's kind of early, but um, I'm going to feed some stuff. And if you guys want to, you, I'll answer some of your questions. Um, if you can think of any questions, just let me know. And I'm going to get to work. All right, let's wait for a few people to show up. Um, just going to answer some questions for you guys if you have any invertebrate care questions. Uh, care questions, mantis, roaches, whatever. I'm um, just feeding today and I'll pull out some mantids for you guys while I answer questions and just kind of work. Um, trying to do some more stuff with YouTube. Things are kind of settling down. Hey man, how's your night going, brother? Yeah, it's doing pretty good. Purple rain, how's it going? <laughs> it's alright. I got a lot done tonight already. I got some surprises for you guys that I'm working on here in the shop. Um, kind of a little studio, which might be nice. Um, better lighting and all this, you know. Um, but uh, I got a lot of subs, a lot of adults, so it'll be a lot of breeding. Um, we had a, f a few hatches. Um, we got good weather all next week, so, you know, we're going to be pretty busy, but I'm just making some cultures and stuff. I got, like, a whole bunch of them. Check it out. Uh, so, those are just for me. I use, like, 50 of those myself. Um, and I make about 50 or, or so for myself every two weeks. And then that's how many I go through just for the nymph um, and some dart frogs that I have. Um, um, I'm glad to hear how long you've been doing this. Oh, seven, eight years, I think. It really, probably since the first time I seen like an exotic mantis that you could buy kind of um, from some other hobbyists, the very few there were. Um, I think when I started, there was a little group on Facebook, and I think it was just like a few people in Europe and like some entomologists and just random, random people, and it must have been under 100 people, but now there's thousands of us keeping them, so, which is pretty cool. Um, but back then, I, I mean... You know, it, it was a long, um, it took a lot of years, it took a lot of years for, uh, for this to catch on, and it's still, I think, really tiny, so, um, but about seven or eight years I've been doing this, um, I forgot what I was doing, you guys ask me questions if you want to, I'm just gonna work, I know it's early, there's probably almost no one awake, but that's okay, if I do it in the middle of the day, I won't be able to read anyone's comments anyway, so. But if you're waking up to go to work, now's a good time to to pick my brain. Hot mantids. Sorry. Um, so some of the things we've got going on, we got ghosts that are getting ready to mate, and we're gonna have a bunch of videos about that. Greetings from Germany. Hi. I was born in Germany. Uh, I was born in Wiesbaden. That's where my family's from. I am German, kind of. I'm American. But I'm also like, that's where my family's from. We're in Germany, are you? And you guys are like all awake over there right now. We're waking up over here. I don't even know what these are. Pulling stuff out to feed. Icy pods and stuff. I guess I'll show you. Hopefully you understand English. <laughs> Like, oh yeah, I'm reading subtitles, I don't know. See my exit sign? They work. I'm getting ready for the fire inspector to come so we can open the store. Um, so consider something. Your stuff went away. Yeah, that was too quick. Too many of you guys are talking at once. Hold on. Let me hit the button. Um, colder countries? Oh, okay. Oh, hey. I don't know what that is in Germany. Is that north somewhere? Uh, anyway, um, uh, keeping mantids in colder countries. Um, to be honest, it's like anything else. It's just, I mean, it's going to be a little more difficult. But, um, I mean, your New Zealand mantids are a good way to go. If you're worried about just keeping things room temp and you're worried about fluctuations, they're pretty hardy. But... 
to be honest. Uh, it's like keeping anything else, a little bit of heat, and you're going to be able to just keep whatever you want. Um, but um, mantids in general um, aren't too hard to climatize. They are susceptible to micro drafts, though, so you got to be really careful. Because, like, if I were to open that door, it's like 10 degrees outside. The micro draft from that could make a lot of the insects in here sick. So I got to be in and out really quick, and it's about 80 degrees in here. Um, I didn't see any of the new questions here. Will you be getting any orchid mantids in? Yep, got orchids. Uh, answering random questions, man. I love your videos. Always had a connection with mantids since I was a young kid. Little aliens. Really appreciate your videos. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yep, a lot of us start out pretty young. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I got orchids now. I just, um, this year sucked because the ones I had hatched didn't do too good. Um, so I wasn't comfortable sending any out because they, uh, they, um, weren't shedding too good. I don't know if it's the weather or what it was, but, uh, you know, uh, micro drafts, micro, micro fluctuations and weather outside can, you know, for something as sensitive as, as, uh, as some very small, delicate insects, they do feel the pressure changes and stuff. And, um, I, I had a, I had a serious problem with orchids this year. I got them going. I can keep them going, but. The orchids did just not do well. Like uh, griffins the year before didn't do real well, but now we have a ton of them. And it's like every, it's not every generation, but it's like, you know, I'll have two years where I got them in stock nonstop and then, um, or randomly and then, you know, a certain species. And then after like, a, um, you know, and then I'll have a year where it's like, I just can't get them going. And I, I mean, I have enough, but I'm not like comfortable enough selling any or even, you know, except for giving them away to people who might be trying to breed them as well, sort of as, a, um, you know, trying to help each other out, um, sort of, a, um, you know, you got to work together to try to keep a species going. And um, I didn't have the, I didn't have to do that with the orchids this year, but I certainly, uh, they certainly didn't do good enough for me to share them. Good man, that's solid business. Yeah. Um, not so solid the last few months, to be honest. This move has killed me completely. It slowed everything down, and I hate it. Can Paradox eat crickets? Yeah. When they get, like, L5, L6, pinhead crickets, small crickets are okay. Uh, I use banded crickets because banded crickets don't cannibalize each other, which means they're not going to attack your mantis either. What was that last thing you said? Uh, I would die just to see one. To see one day. I hear something about... And fertilize. Hey. Um. I don't know what you mean, but. Here I have some cool. Kenyan roaches. See it? Oh, an entomology. Cool. Good job, dude. What do you like to study? What are you like? What do you like to, uh. Or what do you study? I don't know if it. You know, sometimes you don't get to pick, but. Hopefully you, you have your own your own calling. You're able to decide for yourself what you want to do. You probably teach, right? Mr. Mr. Guy on YouTube. It's the term for the study of insects. I know what entomology is. I asked what 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 insects you study, like orthopterids, um, you know, myrmecology, those are ants. You know, what, what branch of insects do you like the best? Silly. Oh my gosh, what was that? No, this building is haunted, I swear to God. Stuff flies off the shelves around in here all the time. So, I'll be making more videos just because I'm nervous and I'm scared. I'm scared of the dark a little bit. Well, this is a new place. I'm in a new city. We moved everything. Everything's here now. Things are operational. Uh, can we see the mantids? Yeah, what do you... Okay, I'll go get some. Hold on. I will go find some. Here. That blossom, my favorite. It's my gastrica. They're always popular. This one has laid a bunch of ooth already. What do you know what caused mantis to lay weird misshaped eggs? 
Um, uh, I think it's something to do with hydration. You know what I mean? It takes a lot out of them to uh, produce an ooth. And uh, come on, Mama, get out. Come on, I'll feed ya. She's getting older, too. Come on, climb, 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 climb. Get out, get out, get out. Hold on. Um, so I think it, uh, it takes a lot out of them. And um, if they're not properly hydrated, I think the youth can become misshapen. So, that's my theory. Come on, girl. I'm not trying to beat you up. Get out. Get out, go see the camera. This is a fourth or fifth generation gastrica, and you can't see it. Okay. I'll put one there. there you go. Sit on the bean beetles. There you go. All right. Keep asking your questions. I hope I can catch them. I'm gonna feed these roaches. Should I feed this man to something? You wanna eat? Do you want to eat? Hmm. You're always hungry. I'll be right back. I'm gonna get something for you. Just a second. About 500 pairs of tongs. And I can't ever find them. Eat, girl. There you go. No, let go of the tongs. Wrong one. There you go. It's in your hand, jackass. Look. It's in the other hand, over here, over here, look, yeah, 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 there you go, old, she's getting old, so, I mean, she's like, ah, oh, I got away, it's in your arm, you're just looking at the wrong one, all right, I'm going to back her up a little bit, so you guys are closer, bring her closer in, you guys can watch her instead of me, hope that's kind of clear, this is a, Kind of a nice new phone. Mm, let me see. You guys ask your questions if you want. I'm sorry if I missed any. Alright. Hey, that's a uh, good time. That prey usually is too small for them. You were asking about spider mites and aphids. As an L1 or 2, I could see them possibly tackling a few of them, um, but uh, they mostly like flying insects and stuff like that, but uh, mosquitoes and things like that would be, a, um, fruit flies are probably a better first food out in your garden, but uh, they would they would take them if they could catch them, you know, as long as they're not too small. Um, I have my, a lot of people don't know this, but I use, I'm feeding these Kenyan roaches right now I just showed you, I use goldfish food, like that. Roaches and ice pods love goldfish food. You don't use a lot of it because it will get moldy, but if you use just a little bit, it's a great way to give them protein, and they have a lot more babies. So, citrus from oranges, apples, and then uh, I give them goldfish flakes. What is this? How many mantis do you have at the moment? Right now, I got like under a thousand nymph, which is unusual, but... We just got done kind of moving and stuff. Um, 
I'd say though we have probably a record number of like subs and adults. So um, I'd say adults and subs we probably have a um, hundred, two hundred, more. 12 bins at least, 18 bins of adult bins, which can be like four species maybe, and maybe like 18 or 20. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't counted them. I'm not going to count them. I have a lot. I have too many. I don't know what this is. She's still eating. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus on me a little bit better. Yeah, it is a lot, unfortunately. I, uh, but, um, there's a lot of species, though, so I, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like, I don't want to work with these anymore. I, you really can't say that when you get in the mantis like I do. It's like, well, if I stop working with it, then it's gone, and I won't see it again. Not unfortunately. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, it's like, some 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 of the mantids are, like, not my favorite. I mean, I like all mantids, but it's like, I really don't like, you know, want to have to work with all, you know, certain ones. And I'm like, well, but then I feel bad, like, if I don't keep breeding it, especially if I'm good at breeding certain ones, then I know they're going to fall out of trade. And I don't want that to happen, so I breed a lot of stuff that aren't my first choice. Um, but, yes. Yeah. I have some orange isopods here that I'm trying to feed. Yeah, they're looking good. <laughs> I'm going to scoot you over a little bit. There you go. Maybe that helps. It takes some of that lighting down. Uh, can some species change colors? They grow up. Um, yeah, she was green, but as an adult, she turned this, like, orangey red color and then as she's gotten older she's gotten more light sort of a brown slash yellow I was thinking focus is weird I don't like this extra light maybe that's what it is I don't know it'll focus it's all right let me shave most of that yep yeah. all right I'll keep going Ask your questions if you want to, or you just keep watching her eat. Are you guys just waking up, or are you guys going to bed? What are you guys doing? I don't get up early. I'm still awake from yesterday, so I have. I'm finishing up some work here, but I am not a morning person. I am not awake. I mean, not gonna stay awake much longer. Greetings from Austria. Hey! Oh, cool. Yeah. The Regilosa or Regiosa or whatever is the European mantis. And that's all you got in Austria. I wondered if you guys had, like, feral Chinese like we do. I wonder if you do. <coughs> but you got ghosts. That's cool. Dwarf myself. You done eating? I she might have another ooth in her, but she's laid four so far. Four. One's already hatched, so you know. Their incubation for the gastrica lasts about mm, 35, 30, 40 days. Shade and we have mild, wild mantids over here in the UK. Yeah, we don't have a lot in Wisconsin either. I mean, just the stupid ones people put out in their garden, the Chinese, but, you know, there's supposed to be a, a stagmo here, but it probably hasn't been here for a long time. Wait, I can't read your, your comments, they're too fast. Uh, hardest species you've had to breed? Uh, I, I'll tell you the ones I had the worst luck with, um, and that 
I still haven't bred it, the Indian Flower Mantis, which a lot of people have bred, but every time I get them, they kill each other. And I mean, I get a ton of girls, ton of boys, you know, I'm doing a good job, I ride the finish line, and the stupid females kill all the boys and I, every time, and I hate them. And when I do get them to breed and they don't kill all the boys, they, uh, they, um, they die before they lay their ooth. Or they lay an ooth, and then the ooth don't even hatch. I don't, I don't know. Creo, Creo Braider, that's like the worst mantis there is. I don't know. It's, for me, it was the hardest. I still haven't produced, I think a few species I produced, but the most common one, the Parsipenis, I have not produced them. Um, but a lot of people have, I don't know. I can't do it. Um, the white armed, I, I bred some of those, and I had a, two small hatches, which I had to hoard and keep to myself. Um, my, no, just the Indian flowers. Indian flower mantids suck. Those were the hardest for me. Just making cultures and for me and for yep. Yeah. There you go. You be in the camera. I'm just feeding ice spot cultures and springtail cultures and you know, getting ready for Monday's orders, you know. Just send my stuff out. Oh, these are white worms. That's weird. Okay. Um, oh, what do you think of the um uh I don't I don't I've never had those before actually. Um they're really new and I don't know how anyone would have them. Those uh para Cooley, whatever. Who? Okay, I can't. Yeah, it was gone too fast. I couldn't read the name. I didn't know exactly what you're talking about. Those are really sweet. Um, I don't know anyone who's produced any. Myself. I mean, it, it could have happened by now, but they're relatively new. I have not seen any in the United States, so no, I haven't had any. But what do I think about them? I think they're pretty awesome. You guys are messaging me pretty quickly, so. Sorry if I don't read your comment. Pretty pricey if you can't, if you can find them. Really? Ah. Yeah, I know, they're super expensive, and it's like, oh, yeah, uh, we don't know anything about this. Try to breed it, see ya. It's like 200 bucks. You know? get like you know, one nymph or something. I don't know where people have found them or gotten them from, but uh, I know some people had got their hands on them somehow. It's like when those moss mantids um, came out, you know, were, you know, found. All of a sudden people had them, and I'm like, how the hell did you get them? Um, are there any glass mantids that you know of in captivity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a small, there's a few, there's a, a few people working with them. Um, Precarious, Pat O'Toole, um, a few others had them last year that I knew. There's a small group circulating. They have, like... An ooth that like hatches three to five nymphs, so but they might lay like two or three. So there's really only enough glass mantids to go between the couple of people that know how to keep them alive. So they're not really circulating, but there is a group in captivity, at least going between a few people. Um, where and how it's doing now, I don't know. I've never had one. I probably could have gotten some, but. Without any experience working with them, I didn't want to risk ruining what we had going here in the U.S. So, you know, I'm more into the uh, the bigger things, big guys, like this girl here, Gastrica. Everyone had Gastrica last year. 
Everybody had them. Then, um, now nobody has them. I don't know. They said, they were like, oh, there's too many. And then, like, it's been, like, six months, and now nobody has any gastrica. So, I mean, there might be a few, but, you know, it's, it's like people go crazy if there's not any more. But then when there's too many, they don't pay attention. That's why I can't really stop breeding certain mantids, even if I'm, you know, not, like, a super big fan or whatever. It's just because I know that as soon as I stop, they're going to disappear. So, you know, and if you wait like six months with any mantis and you're breeding them and you're not selling them, six months later after, even if they were the most common species you could find of they in the U.S., you know, you'll find that uh, very, very quickly they, they disappear. So, you know, that's the thing with mantids, you know, it's... You're, just a few months away from having the only one. You know, so, it, with mantids, it's it's more important for people to find a species they like, one, two, three species, and just work with those three. That's it. Don't work with any others. You know, maybe if you if you're gonna keep some, just keep like one or two or whatever. But like, work with a set group. You know what I mean? And a few people have done that, and the people that have done that have been really successful. Were you itchy? Is leg twitching, freaking out? Did you have to scratch? That was like a like a. I've seen dogs do that. That was weird. Okay. Did you guys catch that? She was all twitching her leg, and then she went and stroke. Yeah. Like she's getting old or something. I don't know. Yeah, she's itchy. So she's like kicking her leg and now she's cleaning it. I didn't even know mantis were it could get itchy. Yeah, she's itchy, right? That's what that's what that means. If she, something's bothering her, she wants to get it off, scratch it, clean it, whatever. That's weird. I've never seen a mantis do that before. It's literally the second time I've ever seen that behavior. Well, I'm glad we pulled her out. Itchy praying mantis. Okay. camera freak out again if you want All right. see here. I know it's a little early I'll probably hop on again in the afternoon just to see what'll happen I don't like filming during the day though it's like eh, people are out doing stuff they're at work you know it's Sunday so I mean I don't know, maybe it's a good day to try but I'm almost done. And today, tomorrow, tonight I get to do tarantulas. All this tarantulas. That kind of sucks. Starting over in a new town. I don't got Rose with me no more. You know what I mean? So I got to find a new crew. And put out postings for jobs and stuff so all those good times we had in the shop you know gotta try to do that again if we can I mean it's up you know we might I make it a solid crew you know I mean work is work yeah I try to make it fun you know and I I hope uh, I hope I make new friends out here if any of you guys are close to Dubuque Iowa let me know I mean I'm still in Wisconsin but I'm just like right on the border but um, it's a, this is a nice town. I like this town. And I'm, like, right by the post office. Oh, she's weird. Okay, I'm just gonna let her do her thing. Alright. Yeah, if you guys have your questions, make sure you ask them. It's pretty low-key right now, so you guys actually... 
Um, as I can remember, you wanted... Oh, the identification key for the mantids. Pretty good. I have a lot of the original definitions for the species I wanted to create the keys for. Those I have put together. Um, as far as using those to create like a visual key. Um, that is going to be a little harder to do. And I really have not had time. Things have been, the bit, stuff's been growing really fast. And with Rick being born this year and all those problems, we, uh, you know, we, uh, I haven't gotten to do much of my, my other stuff. But yeah, that's actually, that went pretty far. A lot of the keys I wanted to finish and publish are, uh, have more than a little bit of work done to them, so. I'm not much of an artist, though, so. It might have to be, like, all pictures and stuff, but. Mm. Thanks for remembering that. That was a while ago. How do you, how do you guys know that? Some of you guys, uh, you know, I'm not just a hobbyist. I do actually, I do research. I got a new research project I'm working on. So, uh, like this female here, her first tooth, uh, of course, I incubated and it hatched, and that was proof of that she had uh, been successfully mated. Now we know that they can lay several ooth, and of course, if the first one hatches, you know the second one will too, under the same circumstance, the same ideal conditions. So my, I have a little research project that I'm working out. Essentially what I'm trying to do is take the second ooth of, the, of a female um, of a certain species, like this is Cyphidromantis gastrica, um, gastrica, and um, basically the first ooth hatched. I'm going to take the second ooth, and this is an African species. I'm going to take the second ooth, which should hatch under the same parameters, and I'm going to put it in the fridge, okay? It's like 34 to 36 degrees or whatever. Um, and I'm going to uh, uh, keep it there, you know, relatively low temperatures for about three to four weeks. And I'm going to do this with every species of non-native mantis, okay? I, my prediction, my hypothesis is that the ooth will die. This is not a species that overwinters. Now... A rel there's not a lot of areas in the U.S. that doesn't see at least a few weeks in the lower 30s. You know what I mean? So, and especially at night. That doesn't include nighttime temperatures. They get even lower than that. So, what I'm trying to do is create a temperature and ooth and species hatch index that lets you know what species could potentially become feral. Um depending on where you live and what the average temperature is for that area and with a three to four week time period essentially what that could tell me is that what you could do is just you know for your state or city or whatever we could figure out depending on my study and having and it's an easy it's an easy experiment to replicate so there should be a lot of other hobbyists that can join in on this if they want to just using my my method and um, essentially what will happen is that um, we will be able to show and have evidence of, um, you know, a lot of, uh, like, uh, you know, the, um, what's it called? Uh, the USDA is having issues with man keeping mantids, right? There, it's still a gray area, like a really big gray area, okay? So, but they have an issue. They have an entomologist there, and they're trying to publish some stuff that's not... She's going to climb. They're trying to publish some stuff which basically is going to make it hard for people to keep things like mantids because they're going to be categorized in the same group as noxious weeds. And under those laws, you can't transfer those animals inside or outside of state if they're non-native, and if they're native, they can only transport it with that permit inside of that state. That hasn't happened yet. There's no evidence to suggest that an African species like Cyphidromantis gastricta will not hatch 
um, or will hatch under certain uh, temperature index. Now she's cleaning her foot on the lens. Come on. Um, essentially, um, basically, with a basic temperature index and a verified first hatch from a certain species like Cypsomantis gastrica, another hobbyist or entomologist or whoever could take another Cypsomantis gastrica, breed it, have the first hatch, take the second hatch, put it in a relatively low and short cooling period, and I know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. The youth is not going to hatch. Youth number two, which would hatch under the ideal parameters of the first hatch, will not hatch if they're put into if they're put into the fridge for any amount of time, which will show that 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 the youth can't overwinter. Okay, that's scientific proof. Use a basic scientific method. We publish that, and then we decide which species are noxious weeds and which ones are not. Mantas are not a noxious weed. They're using, they're trying to use roundabout ways of trying to protect species from collecting. I understand and it's noble and no, we should not be collecting devil flowers by the thousand in Utheka and you know, eventually no, there won't be any devil flowers left. Um, instead we need to figure out how to reproduce them. We're not really good at that yet. And um, I certainly um, don't play with that species very much. Um, because they're so difficult to work with and not not to mention try to breed and then try to incubate and then try to hatch in captivity. I'm about to pull her off of there. Anyway, so her second tooth is um, going to be cooled down. The first tooth hatched. Essentially, I'm trying to show that they can overwinter and therefore in the United States with even a relatively mild winter, three to four week time period, somewhere in the th mid-30s, um, not counting nighttime temperatures for that short brief period of time and that cool down exposure and burmation that is not native to those mantids, then I know that you can keep exotic mantids as pets and it would be irrefutable proof that they could not become feral. That's what I'm working on right now. So it's a little more important than my identification keys. Also, I'm already culturing mantids and there's just rumors and stuff and I I know what's going on with some of the, the one or two entomologists that think they're going to try to do the world some good by, you know, trying to create a lot of green tape for something silly as mantis. There's not even, there's not even green tape protecting things like uh, um, uh, tarantulas, scorpions. I mean, there's way more people that keep those things, and um, they're not noxious weeds. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, it's just uh, just horseshit opinions with no studies. So we'll create a study, and everything will be fine. Um, let me see what you guys have been saying. I'm sorry. I'm trying to explain this. Which species is your longest bloodline? The griffin. The griffin mantids. I started those in... Before I started the YouTube channel. There. Um, so museum's doing something for... Yeah, that's how you tell the difference between mantids um, when you're trying to identify a species. It has to do, strangely enough, with the males. You, t you can't identify a species of mantis by the female. you got to look at the males, and then it's based on the genitals of the males. It's messed up. Uh, I was thinking more um, external, non-internal, um, you know, rough identification keys for hobbyists, you know, things like that. Um, you know, uh, which, which, uh, you know, um, which traits that would be easy to tell, you know, sort of a, give you a rough idea of what something is. I mean, I could pull a Herodula and a Cifidro out, two different genus, uh, you know, genus of mantids, and I could, I guarantee you, most people won't be able to tell the difference, so. Um, there's a lot more work than just actual species or subspecies identification based on the genitals of, of the actual praying mantids, um, based on their genitals to figure that out. We don't, you know, we need we need more basic help than that. Simple identification keys to start with things like identifying the genus of a species of a of a group of mantids. Sorry, and you know, then maybe something a little closer to give, give, giving you an idea of what three or four species that might that that. Um, animal might be pardoned in that genus, but 
subspecies, you're talking about the really high index, indefinite way of telling. And I tell, and then there's only a, a tiny handful of people that can do that. Um, I've seen what that's what that looks like. Those aren't the type of identif identification keys I'm trying to work on. I'm looking at more like basic. What makes a hirdula hirdula? Sifdromantis sifdromantis. What's a you know, what are the difference between the different stagmos? If you had to give it a real quick, you know what I mean? Quick visual aid. This is a dead giveaway. You know, this is a dead giveaway. It's one of these three, four things. Um, really cool research. Love such things. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be fun. Um, it is fun. I'm doing it already. I'm just, the only thing I'm really trying to do is I'm just going to have it published. And I already have um, uh, an entomologist who is going to... Um, He's already published, um, you know, well published um, in scientific peer reviewed journals, and he's got several books. Um, he mostly studies things like uh, stink bugs and stuff like that. But um, we uh, we're gonna work together, and he's gonna help me get published. And all we gotta do is get published, and then you know, there's no fear of people calling mantids weeds, which you know is whatever. They can't overwinter. How can they take over? You know what I mean? It's how they, you know. It's this. It's just something. It's it's just political mess with the hobby that's going on. Most people don't even know about it. And before it's before it's anything's decided, it'll be over. So, and nothing's happening um, in that in the way of that anyway. So, yo yo yo. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, why can you only tell a species by the male? Because for mantids, the difference in telling what species is what is based on the only thing that entomologists studying orthoptids could fi figure out and that was that the m genitals of the males are all unique to each species and that's how we tell the different species and subspecies apart and a lot of the time what they have to do is dissect them to tell well if you're dissecting it then you know it doesn't do us a lot of good for you know hobbyists and stuff like that it's great for science and you know if you raised a whole bunch of them and then you sent one in and some entomologist dissected it for you we could you know we could tell for sure what it was um dna and genetic testing might be the way to go um we're talking old school methodology and i was thinking more just hobbyist methodology so we could like you know, do a better job of not hybridizing things if we can help it. Not that I know that they can or that it's been done, but you want to, you know, if you're going to be a true hobbyist, you want to respect the genetics of that individual and location information and, you know, not mixing species is important if you're a serious hobbyist um, or if you want to, you know, help. Let me see. What did you say? Um, I saw your videos, and I'm gonna get an orchid mantis. Cool, get an orchid mantis, bro. When is the store ready? Oh, the store will be ready. You're seeing it. See the depot. This this was actually an old train uh, railroad station. Um, and uh, this thing's so blurry. I'm sorry. I'll to try to fix it. Anyway, this was an old uh train station or railway station stop and then it was some sort of a depot right like a train depot and then um for a time a small section of the building was turned into a bar called the depot bar <laughs> and um now i've taken over the building and uh the the old depot part remains um as part of the identity as part of the um you know the sort of uh as you know, it's a historical building. It's it's from like the 1800s or something, right? It's totally remodeled and nice and all modern and stuff. But uh, I hate this. It's so fucking blurry. Look at this. It's a mess. No, no, no. Is the lighting in the way? Hello, hello. It's, I don't know what it is. Let's put the mantis back over here. She climbed back on her perch. She's still got that funny leg. See that? Why is she doing that? So just talk, you know, you know, more serious, obvious type questions and things that I've been working on is just kind of what we've been talking about. Um, oh, anyway, so the depot bar, as you can see the sign, um, should be open in 
month or two. I don't know. It depends how fast I can get this stuff done. I got to take care of the customers I already have before I can really uh, take on more. I need more help. And so tomorrow or at today, oh, that's right. Today I'm doing my interviews for uh, the first few people, um, for the crew for the store, and but first the crew for the for the uh, for my shipping. Um, we do have some warehousing type space, and um, it's going to be utilized for shipping. So we're going to have really, really, really fast, awesome shipping. Um, we still got a ton of species, but I got to replace my old crew and train them. Um, so those interviews are today. I picked out some pretty good applicants, so I hope they're cool like Rose, you know, like all those people, you know, people that help me out. Let me see. And Netherlands, 12 here. I mean, it's three in California. <laughs> Space of the Mantis is that they actually have ears. Yeah, thank you. I hope I do too. Um, you know, you, you can't, you know, a job is a job. You got to work, whatever, you know. You can't always pick the people you work with. I can. But um, there isn't anyone that I didn't meet that I knew right away was going to be, like, really cool. So I'm hoping I meet some some pretty cool people. This is a fun thing to do. It's not hard. It's easy. You sit in a nice comfy office chair. You pack up orders. And as soon as that happens, I can do more YouTube stuff like I was doing right before Rick was born and then just thereafter and then we moved and all that other stuff but I ran out of space the business was growing too big couldn't handle it all by myself me and Rose were working too hard so but I got an opportunity to come out here and we took it because we wanted to change you know smaller community better for the kids better for business too um, but yeah I hope I find the right people just sitting there. What's up with that leg? You gonna, you gonna chew on it some more? Yeah. This mantis is over a year old, by the way. The gastrica hatch, the last gastrica hatch I had, and she's not from the last hatch. She's like, one, like the second or third hatch I had last year was in... It was about this time last year. Yeah, she's already she's already a year or more. No, it was. I don't think it was October. I don't think it was Halloween yet. In seventeen, when I started getting gastrica, she looks just like her mom. She was one of the only red females. Well, they start red and they turn like yellowish, but she's like red color. I call it a red because they're like a nice red color. And they got a lot of like lighter yellows. Not like a gold mantis, but I more of a red brown with some yellow. But, um, and then the purple eyes um, is exactly like the her mother. I, they throw mostly greens, but I get these weird red ones sometimes. So they're my favorite. Hello, how's it going? For those of you just joining us or whatever, um, I'm working and taking care of some insects, hanging out with this mantis. Let me know if you have any questions. You should really... I can't read that. Invest in what? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm not looking, I mean, I'm looking forward to the interviews because I'm new around here and I really don't have anyone to hang out with. So, and uh, it's a lot of work and I just want to chill with someone I don't mind hanging out with and working with, so. Um, yeah, it's hit or miss with employees. More than half are just going to be gone in like a couple of weeks or whatever and blah, 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 you know. I tried getting interns too, like, I mean, I get interns, but when I try to hire biology students, I gotta tell you, they're some of the laziest fucking kids I ever met in my life. 
and they think uh, they're going to get biologist pay instead of like regular pay. They don't have any work ethic either, so I just hire regular people to do this, and they are awesome. Why? Because they know how to work, and this to them is not work. And to some kid thinking they're going to get paid all this money, you know, I mean, pays decent, but you know, you know, I'm not paying you to look at my bugs and enjoy them. I'm, you know, you got to work, got to feed the bugs. But so I mean, I tried hiring like students for a time, and that was awful. Nothing got done. They were more interested in screwing around than working. So, you know, most of them never had a job before. And, you know, this is great experience, whatever, if you're going to go into entomological conservation or taxonomy or whatever. But, uh, you know, it's also a job in a sense that this is, you know, I get to do this because we you know, we supply them to people, so. Um, hope the interviews go well. How long have we been on here now? Almost an hour. Let's shoot for an hour, and then I'm going to quit. Um, I'm almost done feeding stuff, or I am done. I don't know. You guys got me all backwards. Other than jobs and work, what is... Uh, these stupid things are gone so quickly. Uh, other than jobs? No, not that rare. I know a few people that have them, and um, one of them's doing an amazing, amazing job at it. She almost has adults. I can't say her name, though. But uh, she's doing really well. A lot of people fail at them, but... Uh, there is a solid, there is a solid group in the U.S., and I hope she does what she's hoping to do with them. So, and then I can get some. Uh, what's your favorite mantis species of mantis? Species none. Genus Cyphodro hirdula rombadera. Big green or slightly hooded. I like rombaderas the most, I guess. Doesn't matter what kind of Rombadera. Where is the store located? It's near Dubuque, Iowa. It's not open yet, so I won't give you an address. If you're around Dubuque, I might consider visit having you guys visit, but yeah. the store will be open soon enough. I'm gonna get someone else to man it. I mean, I'll hang out with my Mantis fans, you know, like my, my Mantis hobbyists, my people, but, you know, that's about it. Not too interested in setting up store hours and hanging out. I'll be in the back. something. Oh, there it is. Um, I'd love to visit the store. Would it be very expensive though? Uh, to visit the store? I'm, it's, um, I'm not gonna be like selling just bugs and stuff. I, it's, I'm calling it the Reptile Depot. I'm gonna have like exotic reptiles and then there will be a, some insects, yes. You know what I, what I would carry. I think in a small, nice displayed area, cultures and things like that, and nymph, of course, maybe some nice adults or and supplies. Um, it's gonna be nice. I already have it all figured out. I'm still working to set up a product line with um, Exoterra and Zoomed. Their sales reps are supposed to be here in the next few weeks, and. Um, then I gotta get my shelving. I have a few displays I'm working on. Oh, I'm working on something awesome for the YouTube channel, and I'm gonna sh I'm gonna reveal it here. But I want to make it an actual video because it's too cool to just be like, look what I got, look what we're gonna do. So I'm already recorded some footage, and I just gotta edit it. But I'm doing something else special. 
but it also has to do with the store. But yeah, I should record. I should do like a secret live stream of the interviews. Are you willing to hold and handle insects? Can you hold this one? Put it on your face. No, I'm just kidding. I had a girl who could hold a mantis, tarantula, but if a cricket got near her, she screamed and would like flip tables and stuff. Yes, I threw crickets at her often. It's probably the only reason I hired her. So I could bully her with Rose. Are you guys still in bed? This is the only time you're going to get your questions answered, because if I do one during the day, it's not going to happen. Come on, ask your questions. Or watch this mantis clean her foot. I told you enough already, I think. You guys ask questions. Short questions that I can read. Well, I haven't opened it up again. Look into the, in the posts. What time is it? Four more minutes. We're going to make it a one hour live stream. I guess we could pull out another mantis while we wait. I just got an African mantis, AS gastric. I'm wondering how often to spray him. Oh, um, I would give him water to drink every day if you want. I don't know if he'll drink it. I do mine every every other day, but you know, just a fine misting. You know, make sure there's some moist substrate at the bottom this time of year. In winter, it could be pretty dry out. Um, so make sure you put moist sphagnum moss at the bottom of his container or cage or whatever. Just for humidity's sake, keep that moist. But, um, yeah, they can drink from that also. How many ooth is normal for a female to lay from one breeding? Rhombidae, which is made three. I had a ghost that laid me nine. All nine hatched. That was the most I ever got from a ghost, a single ghost. She mated three times with three different males. She killed two. Um, mealworms are great feeders. I use coconut soil with that. Yep, that's perfect. Yep, just make sure it stays moist. Make sure it's moist. Um, keep it moist, and he'll they'll have good sheds. But right now in the winter time, I'm getting a ton of mist malts. Um, there's nothing you can do about it. It just happens this time of year. But I have something cool that's going to help us with our mist malts, and that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Not really help us, but kind of solve the problem. Um, what was I going to say? Are we going to pull out another mantis? You going to eat it? You going to eat your foot? Okay. Okay. You know what? I will pull out Lorraine from the YouTube series. Let's see how much bigger she got. Are you ready? She's not an adult yet still, but she is big enough to do another video, update video, but I'll give you a little live stream. Ta-da! Well, I have to imagine if I put her. Look how much bigger she got. She's great. No. Let's see here. Focus camera. They don't want to focus on her. There you go. Have you message retracted? I can't. I didn't see. Yeah, the coconut fiber stuff is good enough. This is a female. You can see one more shed and she's going to turn green. 
that really spade shaped abdomen dead giveaway females uh, the males abdomens are much longer than that so plus the yellow the light coloration there but this was that tiny L1 L2 you saw zoom in there you go do you have any centipedes? Yeah, but I hate them. Vietnamese centipedes. Huge ones. Huge and horrible. And always hiding unless they're getting fed. I got them from Creative Ectothermic Solutions where you can get them too. Are you going to breed, do more breeding videos? I made three or four breeding videos, but I never edited edited them and put them together and posted them. I probably have like twelve or thirteen. I made a um, how to cure, you know, like a, you know, m mantis illnesses, what to do with uh, mist malts. I mean, I did like I've done a ton of videos. And there's just so much footage and stuff. I mean, I'm always recording stuff in the shop, but I just don't have time to put them together. Um, but I have, like, there are probably, like, a dozen hour-long full, um, you know, full, uh, you know, fully themed, like, breeding, you know, this or breeding that or doing this or how to do this videos that I've recorded that I just got to put together. Some of them is five years old probably, you know. From way back when, you guys probably remember. Let me see. I hope you have a great day. Oh, I couldn't read it. It only stays up there for like a second. Hope you have a great day with the interviews. I hope my ghost will get that big one day. It will. If it's a female, you know, the females get a bit bigger. Kind of slow growing, though, especially in the winter, things slow down, which isn't bad. They're going to live longer and stuff. It's warm in here, but still, she grows like a, you know, she's growing enough. But there will be an updated episode of these guys, and then when they go to breed, I'll make a video, an episode for that. I'll do a breeding video of the ghosts, which I don't have recorded and laying around. But I hope my interviews go okay. It's been an hour. We talked a lot. I talked a lot. We watched a mantis chew on her foot. Looking forward to the video. Thank you. I will do a good job. Things are a little bit chill now, so I have more time. I'll do more live streams and stuff. And videos. Good luck with the interviews. Thank you. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to them. Let's see how many of them show up. Let's see how many of them stay. You know. Let's see if I, you know, if any of them are cool. I might secretly record it and then we can make fun of them later. <laughs> Just kidding. Now people are like, oh yeah, I don't mind insects, and then they're like itching themselves all day long. It's like, get out of here. No, that doesn't happen. My friends do, though. They they freak out. There's cool people in this town. I've met a few. I do got one guy. He's almost definitely going to start with us. He's nice. His name's Marco. Um, not sure. And then we have Jim, who's starting in August. Or April. He's starting with us in April. I just got through feeding mantis, long days breeding. Yeah. Yeah, long days of feeding and this and that. I am, well, well I'm, what I'm doing is doing cultures. These. And these, which I still gotta do. Are all the ones that people ordered and stuff. I hope 
I hope these interviews go good because uh, they're helping me ship tonight if they do. Because I want help tonight. I got too many orders to fill. At first, I got to finish. I mean, I think I'm finished feeding the cultures. But I, got, I mean, I got to make cultures. I fed the cultures that are going to go out. Do you still have orchid mantids? Yep. We still got orchids. We just, uh, they didn't do too good, so I had to keep what, what we had for breeding. You know. Well, I got to go, you guys. Um, keep checking out the live streams. I hope this wasn't too boring. It was kind of interesting, actually. Some stuff happened. Some mantis -y stuff happened, you know. We talked about projects and, you know, all that stuff. Anyway, thank you for your support and all that. I got to get back to work. I got a lot to do today. But um, look out for my next video. Not a live stream video. Bye, guys. See ya. Say bye. Nope, just Aiden. Okay. See ya. All right, ending right as I joined, darn. You can watch it. You can watch it. It's not. Don't get away from me. Get out of here. Oh. Let me see here. How do you turn this off? Oh, God. I'll just. Where are you going? Come back here. Uh oh. Have a good day, guys.